Have we got a ban list coming up? Well, I'm not sure. I did a little uh, poll on my Twitter to see whether the ban list would come this month, next month, and 66% of people said that it would come this month. Now, I love a good ban list uh, discussion, so I thought I'd do a very early ban list sort of review, when it could come, what hits they could make, what events we have coming up, and just to have a look, see what could happen really. Um, I love a good discussion about the ban list, so I, why not do one early? Just get it out of the way. You know, this format is considered to be over. We haven't got really, uh, many big events coming up. So, okay, so we have YCS Philadelphia happening uh, end of May. So that's the end of next month. So we've got about six weeks until this event. We also have, I believe, uh, some remote door stuff. We have our nationals, um, all the American WCQs, and that is a breakdown of London, which we'll go over in a minute. So if we go over the nationals, so we start off national season, I believe, start of May. Yeah, like Portugal, 6th of May, and then we've got Switzerland, 13th. UK is end of uh, May, and then it carries all the way out until about, yeah, June 18th. So, like, traditionally, how I see, like, the nationals format and the WCQ format, they should be under the same. They should, all should be one ban list off the back of like a new set. We're due to have uh, Cyberstorm Access, which is like a really important set for our season. And I think a ban list should traditionally come either before or a week or so after. So, you know, that's how we sort of see Nationals WCQ season. But as we can tell from last season, that's not how it could go down. We had our national format and our European Championship format in two separate set releases we had two separate ban lists i don't did we have a ban list before i don't think we had a ban list in between actually i think it was just two yeah it was just one big set in between it but in, in america they only had their one national under the difo format so we could see here half of the european nationals be in the photon hypernova format and we could see half our nationals be under a different ban list that would be super weird i'd rather have them all under the same roof uh it would be cool to have you know all that experience from nationals for the European player base that is converted then onto Euros. Everyone's got a big tournament behind them. So like Euros is more, it's good quality Yu-Gi-Oh! It's more enjoyable to watch looking back at the stream, you know, good, everyone's like technical play should be a lot better. So I think Euros should be a much higher quality in that regard. So um, that's how I like to see it. But then again, you know, it all depends on when this ban list comes, what we can sort of, expect so if your nationals is early may i probably predict to play the next set without a ban list but if if it's going into june sort of end of may i probably prepare for a ban list and just look at the new cards in the new set get familiar with all the new interactions with the new cards released and then sort of take your initiative on whatever changes they make so yeah that's sort of european tournaments um we have obviously uh, the south american nationals i expect it to be a ban list before then 100 percent for like Central, South and North America. Uh, obviously YCS Philly, I probably expect to see a ban list before there, but it's just the debate of the early nationals for Europe that could potentially have no ban list. And yeah, could could be the same with the addition of the new set, uh, Cyberstorm Access, which I might do a video on. I might do a video of like what cars to pick up, what cars to look out for. Um, so if you wanna see that, let me know in the comments. So if you look at the ban list in general, um, we're actually going to talk about the ban list now instead of events. Uh, this is off the back of the current format. So we've had YCS London, Bogota and Los Angeles. So this is the breakdown from London. Top 64, Cash Tira, super represented. Sprite, um, 16%. Runic, 13%. Then Mathmec, Branded, Ricker and a big chunk of other. If I were to look at the ban list, obviously Cash Tira is most represented. But I don't think it is a problem. The only problem is is how to prepare your side deck and your game plan against Cash Tira because there are two de different ways of playing the deck. Very control, playing play the four summons, um, make a big boss monster pass turn with loads of like, utility. And then the other way of playing it is just to go super wide and lock zones and make like f f three to four monsters. So it's a bit difficult to sort of prepare for. Game plan, there are obviously things to do to cover both aspects of the deck. Uh, but I, I think as, as a format in, in general, it would be nice to know what exactly that deck was trying to achieve. Although, you know, you can't really predict um, 
at the moment. So yeah, that's a big chunk of the field. So I would have said Sprite was, wasn't was as good as the other decks because of the elf hit. But looking back on it, I think it made sense to why the Sprite's still super consistent. Uh, Sprint's like a really strong card in general. Uh, the deck is like quite a compact small engine so you can play a lot of uh, non-engine. Same with Runic really. I think Nichu Runic's been a really consistent deck this format. Always competing for not only top cut but for winning events in general. I always see it, see it at regionals that I've been playing to, uh, like the last couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, I expect these three decks to be checked in particular. Okay, so going on to the actual balance itself. What cards could we see hit? What cards could we have uh, not going into our WC WCQs, our Continental Championships? What, um, what format are we sort of looking at here? So if we look at what cards are currently popular uh, or what decks are currently taking over at the moment, we can sort of imagine what hits, hits they could do. Also, uh, what cards can sort of come off the ban list? What cards brought back to three, brought back to two? So at the top here, I've got these cards and I've got some of these at the bottom I couldn't put into one section, but we'll talk about each of them. So I, I think Prosperity could potentially go down to two. It could have the desired treatment. Um, I don't see it going down to one personally. It is a super crazy card. Let's be let's be honest. The value that Cash Tira gets from this card right now is actually absurd. I when I play Cash Tira and I have an Arise Heart and I resolve a Prosperity and I'm picking up bits of utility cards from my banished face down cards. By the way, um, is a bit silly. And not to say that this card wouldn't be good if Cash Tira was a thing, but to say the card's been super played since it's released. I, I've always seen it in top tier strategies. Being able to see, you know, an additional six cards to your starting hand going first is like really insane. To dig for like non-engine against like a, a certain matchup, like a blowout non-engine is is really insane. And like I said, the value Cash Tira gets off this card right now, I could potentially, I wouldn't be surprised if they put this card to two or even, even one really. I mean, I, I wouldn't expect it to go to one, but I think two would be a fine hit. Um, next is sort of like the adventure engine, and now. I've never been a big fan of it. I, I think it's broken, but the fact that it is like super, super unfair, it does a lot. Like the adventure cards do a lot. Um, it, I think it's warranted now. Adventure cards are not like super popular at the moment. Adventure Sprite probably the most popular variant. Uh, it would make sense to just like have a little reset for the game, put it to two, put it right to one maybe, or even ban Griffin. I'd be happy with that. Just to sort of, you know, say that, you know, adventure cards, they were last year. Let's sort of sell the new new sets. Let's sell the new cards. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if you got some hits for the adventure cards. Um, also got uh, Cyberstein. So there is a combo for the new uh, Super Heavy Samurai stuff uh, that involves the next set as well that, that summons like Dragoon or Exterior uh, using Cyberstein. So they could potentially hit it. Um, I don't think so, but you never know. It, it, it could be... Uh, a really uh, crazy degenerate card that can just fuel out some uh, broken floodgate monsters from the extra deck if it's not uh, so, like sort to this format it could really lead to some toxic combos but we'll see um, next is talent so I like talents I think mean, talents is a very very core cool utility card um, but let's be honest it's a bit strong it's a bit good um, <laughs> I don't think I've well have like resolved it myself and have it resolved against me where they look at my hand and I've used like a hand trap and then use a down another card and then they get if they play through it they're chilling but they do, obviously it's a bit of an issue if they, they aren't playing through the hand trap um, but I'm just saying if they play through a hand trap you then get to get full knowledge of the hand and take out another card and then like potentially um, have like an 80% 80, 80 combo 60% combo so yeah, I, I think Talents is a crazy card. Not to mention it, it's very good at going second, taking control of opponent's cards is very good. Taking control of a Rice Heart with like multiple materials, cracking a board, making a huge Zeus, and just that's a massive blowout. Uh, and again, drawing two cards is like the worst effect on this card, which is again, very silly. I, I just wouldn't be surprised. And this card's been around for a while. It could be a case of them trying to maybe sell out Thrust. Thrust is a really good card from uh, Photon Hypernova they could try and force that into people's decks instead of the talents so um, yeah I wouldn't be surprised if this card went to one so next we got Hugin so I don't actually know how you hit the runic cards or whether you need to um, I'd like to check the, check the deck or the engine 
personally, I like to put Hugin to one. I don't think it'd make a massive difference. You know, Hugin obviously is uh, quite integral for the grind game of the deck, but there are other targets you can summon. Uh, yeah, and then if it's destroyed, it can just recycle itself anyway. So I think Hugin could be a could be an okay hit for Runic. Um, I'd be happy with it. I think Runic needs to be sort of checked some some way along the line. So I think why not put Hugin to one now? Now I've got Sprind in here, and I'm not too sure how I'd approach sort of checking Sprite in general, whether it would be like a Sprite starter to one, or a ban on the Sprite starter, or you ban Sprint. From what we saw from like London, we saw loads of people playing Sprite cards in their sort of their Runic decks, but not as like a Sprite deck, just a way to extend and get more value from sprite cards because let's be honest the sprite cards give a lot of value for what they are three summons um a blue into a jet into like a double cross or a smashes is is pretty strong even like a starter as well i think if you want to check sprite you could either ban starter or you ban sprint um because sprint sort of turns off the angler play because let's be honest like uh, a lot of people summon gigantic hoping it gets like hand traps so they can make a sprint and then send an angler get two more bodies and keep playing through that way so um if you hit sprint the deck as a pure engine is like pretty much unplayable right it has like nothing really going for it anymore um but you can still incorporate it in other decks but i don't know whether you want like konami want it to be incorporated in other decks or they want to hit it as like a deck in itself because it, it won't lend it right it's, it's a good deck but yeah it, it's, a t it's a tough one i think even like you ban starter or you ban sprint if i'm honest um any one of those hits would be fine i, I wouldn't be surprised if they do that after like euros or national or american um or north american championship like i i literally like i think you have to hit the deck at some point so why not do it now right um or maybe they, they do it after the tins they could just like resell sprite stuff in tins or like a new set because i don't think parody elements is in the tins so We'll see. Next is Diablosis, the Mind Hacker. So I think you ban it. I think this, uh, this card's like a fine hit. I don't think it's the most broken card in the cash deck, but I think it's the card that enables a lot of the zone locks. Um, I think what makes cash like really appealing is that the fact that you can just see your opponent's extra deck. Um, that obviously is a big giveaway of what what type of board you're trying to make, and for just matchup interaction knowledge on their turn. Um, if you go first, so. Yeah, I, I think banning this sort of forces the deck to do um, like a Rise Heart Pass or even like Shang with a Rise Heart and maybe like another, or even like Double Rise. I think the, it could just force the deck into doing like Double Rise Heart, which I think is still a, yeah, still a thing. So even without, without this. So yeah, I, I think this, it, this hit would be very much warranted, I think. Um, stopping all the zone locks would be great and having like a more linear um, end ball to be super super nice as well but may, like who who knows they might just keep it and force players to keep playing this rock paper scissors sort of guessing game with this with the side decks and etc so um, yeah okay so that's sort of it for the bands um, or what I expect to be hit next is what cards can come off the ban list um, We've got H of Fury Dragon at one. It can come to three. It's had a Serata. Not much more to say about that one. Uh, Dryden't. Now, could Dryden't come back? I think not yet. I'd be surprised if it come back this year. But I could potentially see like a, a zoo. Um, like a, a barrage or a Dryden't come. Like, or even like a rat to three or something. Or Broad Bull. You, you never know. I, I think one of those cards could have come back eventually but it would be cool to see some sort of zoo stuff back off the ban list um next is summon sorceress now hear me out Yu Gi Oh was a different game back then it had no nibiru um i think that's it really like nibiru <laughs> but i mean the card's broken it is a very broken card but it could come back you never know there aren't really too many degenerate sort of combos these days that like summon for like half an hour so who knows? It could come back. It could. I wouldn't say it'd be great, but it could come back. Um, Electromite. I don't think this card would come back uh, anytime soon, really. I think if it was going to come back, it would have come back during double format 
or Blazing Vortex format. So I think if it hasn't come back by now, when will it ever come back? They could just, uh, I don't know, if there's ever like a new Pendulum structure deck or a new bit of support for, like more support for Pendulum cards, they could just bring it back. But if they haven't done it by now, then will, will they ever do it? I, I don't know. Uh, Colossus, I don't think Colossus could come, come back for a while. Um, let's be honest, it's a bit of a gatekeeper and it's very splashable. And dragons is still a thing. And we all know how good the dragon cards were with the Thunder Dragons. Bit bit good, right? So, yeah, we'll keep this guy banned for now. Uh, glow Up Bulb. I think Glow Up Bulb can come back. I, I, OCG have got it back at the moment. Um, all the tier decks have gone. Hulk's gone. I think this card can come back. Uh, VFD was like a card when Glow Up Bulb was legal. So I don't think um, there would be anything too scary if Glow Up Bulb come back. Um, so yeah, potentially. Uh, Blaster, you know, it's, it's, I believe it's legal in OCGs, legal in Master Duel. I'd be fine with this deck or this card coming back even. There aren't too many fire decks um, in the format at the moment. So I yeah, there's no reason for that not to come back. Uh, Pankratops. So Dinos are getting more support. And Misk is on here as well. So could we see Pankratops to two? A Misk to two? I mean, Pankratop doesn't necessarily be have to be for Dinos. It's generically a very insane card to go in second. Um, 26 body, quick effect, tribute for cost, pop a card. Like, <laughs> this card was crazy. Back in the day, this card was nuts. But again, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a different game right now. And yeah. I, I'd be happy this card come back, personally. I, I think it's a really cool card. Um, makes going second a, a bit easier as well. Because let's be honest, if you win a dice roll in Yu-Gi-Oh at the moment, like you have a big advantage. So having cards like this in the format is is fine. Like a good, good strong go second card helps make going second a bit easier in Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, I'm all for it. So I, I'd be fine with this card come back to two, potentially even three in the future. Um, we've tried to have cards like come back that's similar to it, but like Alpha the King of Beasts, right? Or we're Alpha, like the, the Beast 3k attack, bounce, return, attack, yeah. Um, this card's just like based. I, I love it. Um, Misk. Misk could come back to two, even three. Dino's got new support. Uh, I hate this card. I think this card's absolutely broken, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it came back. Time Seal. This could come back, I, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, call by. I'm going to say no, but I quite liked this card at three. Um, especially in like hand trap heavy formats, where if you go first and you have an Ash in hand or a Veiler in hand, and you get Ash or Veilered, call by, negate the Ash while you have an Ash in hand, it makes a, a dead card like go in second. So I, I think for that interaction, really, it could one day come back. I don't think now's the time for it, but yeah, it, I quite enjoyed playing with it back in the day. So it, yeah, maybe I'm I'm not. Uh, that's an unpopular opinion, but <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Gazelle, Gazelle could probably come back, and it sadly wouldn't do anything. But Mathmech is just like a bit better right now, right? Is Salad would Salad be better than Mathmech? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it would. Uh, Cyber's decks are a little bit different right now. You know, we've got Princess is its own thing, but I think in terms of like Mathmech, um, Salad, they still try to like accomplish the same thing of like Heat Soul, drawing cards and access code, like cheesing OTKs. So, yeah, I'd be, I'd be for it. Sekka's Light. Um, this card could come back because of the super heavy Samurai stuff. It requires them to have no spell traps in grave, right? Or like no spells in grave. I think it's spell and traps. I'm not too sure. Um, that deck sort of requires them to have no spell or traps in graveyard. So Sekka's Light gets around that perfectly because it removes itself from the grave. You draw two. Uh, you, p you basically draw three cards um, if you see Sekka's Light. So it could make that deck crazy. And it could sell like super heavy samurai like crazy as well. So if they really want to push like super heavy samurai, they they bring this card back to three for sure. I'm very sure they do that. Um, if they wanted to make it like the best deck, so um, although I I think that deck has 
although I think the deck's strong, I think it has problems, but it's it's very strong. Of um, like not to mention draws an issue, right? So if you sack as light, you get drawled. <laughs> you, you're probably not doing much that turn. Uh, next is like True Draco stuff, like Diagram and Card of Demise. I think Card of Demise could just come back. Like it, it just could. Uh, Diagram potentially could come back with the Dino support. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. Like the card is very strong, but uh, Lithosagem is a three now, so extra deck rip stuff could be a bit annoying. But that's just something to look out for. I think Card Demise can come back. I think this card is really cool. Uh, gives like trap decks like an extra bit of draw power. It was last used in like Striker and like True Draco. Yeah, I think it's fine. Uh, Astrograph, same as like Electromite. I think uh, it's a bit past its prime, but I think it, it could come back and uh, be warranted in the format. Where Pendulum probably isn't very good because of like Cash Tier Pendulum Zone Locks. Uh, multi Roll, I think Multi Roll could come to two. See how it goes, then put it to three. I think Striker's not really doing much at the moment, especially with Bistials in the format, Cash Tier Burst in the format. Uh, the new Pearly cards can like pick stuff out. Your opponent's grave like spells and traps out your opponent's grave so yeah put this card to uh to see how it goes uh block dragon absolutely not this card is i like this card is just like absurd i remember like lockdown format when people were playing adamant and emancipator i wasn't playing much back then i was playing like eldlich and and altergeist and then i was reading this block dragon card which i knew existed but i never seen it like be used in a way that I use I watch people use it, and I was like, yeah, this card is uh, shouldn't be a thing, like ever. Um, the fact that um, is this card sent to grave. <laughs> if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add up to three mo rock monsters from a deck to your hand, whose levels equal to eight. You just add three cards. Yeah, say no more. Uh, Harp horror, big debate on Harp horror. Um, I I think it'd be cool if it came back to one. But I think they're probably going to wait for Orca support. They're not going to release it off the back of no hype. I reckon they'll, if they ever do like a reprint set for Orca, or if they ever do any Orca support or World Legacy support, we'll see it come back then. But until then, I can't see it coming back. Uh, Vanity's Emptiness. I think this card can come back to one. Now, it might be crazy. I've never played with this card in format except for my draft. My, like, my cube draft. Um, and obviously, it's very good. But it's a very like slow floodgate considering like modern Yu-Gi-Oh! standards. So, I think you can put it back to one. See how it goes. I believe it's in Macedor. Or it was banned in Macedor. Maybe it's banned in OCG. I'm not too sure. Uh, but either way, I, I it'd be cool to see this card come back. Like another floodgate in a format which I don't people don't like to see but gives like entry players like another win condition right um at lo I, I think you see like loads of play at, like local level maybe like regional level but I, I like I said it's a bit slow for modern day standards so with all that said you know this is the breakdown these are the events coming up um will we see a ban list like this month I think so I think we'll see a ban list this month uh It'd be it, like like I said, it's not compulsory that all nationals and WCQs have to be in the same format, but I just like it personally. I, I like having the the pinnacle of the season be high technical play where players have had months or like weeks um, of a couple of regionals, all the nationals going into Euros, all that experience just like on a very high level. I I, I appreciate like a good solid tournament, a good Yu-Gi-Oh experience um not to say like new formats are, are not that but that's just traditionally i i think it would make sense and then of course we got the world championship so let's go out with the band guys it's been one hell of a season uh this is my ban list predictions or thoughts time scales impacts i'm gonna do a video on cyberstorm access let me know what you guys think let me know your opinions of what i've talked about what i have what, what i haven't talked about and Best of luck in your regionals, nationals, all that stuff, and I'll see you in the next video.